What is up everyone, one of my absolute favourite duos to run in the Orch League is Heliolisk plus Ghost. I've already shown this duo with Jellicent and Skeledurge, but today I'm showcasing it with Drifblim running Mystical Fire. I really like Drifblim in the current meta as it functions as a nice pivot, because there aren't really that many hard answers to it, and if a hard answer was to switch in, you can at least debuff it using Mystical Fire and farm it down with either Heliolisk or the Verizon in the back. I'm running Verizon in the back as it is a great answer to the water types, especially Swampert, that can still threaten the Heliolisk Drifblim core. This team did amazing for me. Actually, in the first two sets, it didn't do that well. I went 4-6 in the first two sets, but I kept going after five sets. I actually went 69 on the day and managed to climb all the way to a new season high rating of 34-22. Anyway, let's get into the battle, starting off with an awkward lead against Alolan Sandslash. It is running Shadow Claw, which does no damage, but it would outpace two drill runs, which would one-shot uh, the Heliolisk. Luckily, my opponent decides to overfarm, though, allow me to sneak and Thunderbolt through against the Alolan Sandslash before I even fire a move. And this is great, because now I can control the outcome of this matchup, because I know I can just double shield Heliolisk now and farm this Alolan Sandslash all the way down. First, I throw a Breaking Swipe right before they get to another Duran, though. And now I see an opportunity. They basically have to throw the move almost immediately. So I'll wait two turns from Heliolisk, then catch uh, the Drill Run on my Drift Blim here. And they force to switch out because uh, I would have hexed down before they get to another Ice Punch. Now they bring in the Clefable. And this is a pretty awkward Pokemon for this team to face, to be honest. As Verizian just gets kind of walled by it. And Drift Blim and Heliolisk don't, don't do great either. Also, I'm a Shield down. And they just got a debuff on their first Moonblow. So this is looking, uh, yeah, not that great. Uh, they let the Shadow Ball go, which didn't do that much, as I unfortunately did get that debuff, and I don't even reach the Mystical Fire before they get to the Meteor Mash. I let my Drift him go, as I need shields for Heliolisk. I want shields so I can really stack up this Volt Switch damage versus the Clefable, and I don't want to get knocked out by this Moonblast. Now I'm two shields down, not great, but my Heliolisk has a lot of energy. These Volt Switches are stacking up. I go for the Breaking Swipe. My opponent decides to catch this move on their Nido Queen. They're probably thinking that Clefable is going to be very useful in the back still that I might have like a dark in the back or a Verizon in the, or Verizon in the back um so they're saving it but this works out for me Nido Queen is a big core breaker for this Heliolisk rising core but seeing it here against my Heliolisk with a ton of energy is kind of ideal to be honest I get to another breaking swipe and if they want to keep this Nido Queen healthy they gotta shield it, it another two shields down they're triple debuffed a poison fang will do nothing versus Verizon at this point now, Alolan Sans is still there as a potential catch, so I don't want to throw my Leaf Blade immediately, being afraid of that, and they do uh, switch it in, so I just double kick it down, out comes Clefable now, I know can instantly throw the Leaf Blade, knock out the Clefable, and then I just hope I can outpace uh, the Needle Queen now to a Leaf Blade, which I do, and Verizon uh, cleans up this game, but it was really Heliolisk that was the MVP there, ba basically taking out the Alolan Sand Slash and the Nido Queen on its own. Ooh, another Clefable lead. Like I said, this is a pretty awkward lead. This is, again, where uh, having Thunderbolt helps out, to be honest, as it does do a lot more damage than Grass Knot. That this, this matchup, or, like, a lot of neutral matchups is where I really like Thunderbolt and the previous, like, Steel matchup against Alolan Sandslash, and uh, Registeel is really where Thunderbolt helps out. So that's why I'm running it on Heliolisk over Grass Knot, because Grass Knot really only helps first, like, Swampert. This time, I was actually able to... Uh, a burn a shield with a breaking swipe bait. Normally that doesn't really happen, and I'm actually kind of fine with that, as if you just fire a breaking swipe, even if they let it go, you can take a Moonblast then, so that's why breaking swipe, it's not that big of a risk, because at least then um, you still got some guaranteed damage in. Uh, but yeah, this time they shielded, which was just amazing. Anyway, I really should throw my breaking swipe immediately, but I wasn't expecting a counter user to farm me down, but you know, it did. So my Helios went down, but I'm still able to bring out Drift Blame against uh, the Polygraph to pretty much hard counter it. And they're forced to bring in their, their Gliascore at this point, which is great, because Verizon definitely doesn't want really to see Gliascore. And Drift Blame doesn't love Gliascore either, since I'm running, running the Icy Wind. Uh, I still decide to throw my debuffing move, Mystical Fire, uh, immediately though. Uh, because they don't know that I'm not running Icy Wind. So I was hoping to maybe see a shield, but I don't, which is still fine, because I debuff them, uh, and now they weren't able to knock me out with two Night Slashes, effectively. They have to throw a third. Fast moves do a lot of damage first for Ryzean, but charge moves not that much. Unfortunately, though, they get the boost, and that means they just do so much more damage than I was expecting. This is pretty bad. These wing attacks are really stacking up. 
they switch out, I think, close to a move, maybe like one wing attack away. Uh, so I'm afraid that I might get to it later. Out comes the Polyrath now. And now I just gotta hope I can get to two more Leaf Blades before they get to the Double Ice Sponge. Ryzean paces so quickly to these Leaf Blades though, I think that should be possible. This one gets shielded. Oh, actually they let it go. They were expecting me to outpace and they wanted to knock me out with the Glide Score, but the Glide Score goes down to one double quick and that's a GG. Alright, Toxicroak. Pretty bad lead for this team. Heliolisk loses, Verizian loses, Triflim is a hard wall though, uh, but yeah, it's not great. Luckily though, most Toxicroak lines are very weak to Verizian in the back. Usually it's like Redent and Steelix in the back, which Verizian does extremely well against, uh, so I'm still feeling alright here. The thing is though, that generally uh, opponents do realize that their Toxicroak is going to be good in the back. So my, what my opponent here actually does is very smart. They overfarm a Toxicroak, and then they switch into the Steelix. Now, this is a fine matchup for Driflin, by the way. This is why I'm running Mystical Fire, or one of the reasons why. Uh, another reason is a Lola Hand Slash, or Reggie Steel. Uh, but Steelix, definitely one of the big reasons, too. You do super effective here, and Driflin generally does win this matchup. Now, the thing I'm worried about is a Greedent in the back. So, what I kind of want to do here is I'll take this Breaking Swipe, and then I'll switch in Verizian to get farm, and I... Oh, I almost want to farm down uh, this Steelix, because I want to get out of this matchup which with enough energy to be able to knock out the Toxicroak before it gets to two Sludge Bombs, and then also have enough health left over to uh, take care of the Greedon too. So that's the plan now. Toxicroak comes out now. I have a lot of energy. I'm now at double. One Sacred Sword, and now I'm at another one uh, for this. But do they already have to move? Unfortunately, they do. I only needed one more double kick coming out of that Silex matchup to be able to outpace the Toxicroak, but unfortunately, I did not get it. They get to the Slush Bomb. Doesn't knock out Verizon, though. This might still be possible if it's something super weak to Drift Blim, but no, ends up being Tapu Fini. Had I had that one extra double kick coming out of the uh, Steelix matchup, I would have won this game, but unfortunately, it was just not meant to be. And I concede the match, because at that point, it was over. Heliolisk Mirror. And this actually ends up being a full mirror team. I don't know who this player was. I don't know if they were watching the stream, if they've seen me run this line, or if they just came up with it uh, on their own. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, great to see. If you're watching this video, shout out to you. Great battle. Uh, yeah, we're watching it right now. Uh, my opponent actually decides to over farm like twice, which is interesting. I guess they were trying to bait a potential grass knot, but I don't think that's worth it. I think you should just go straight Breaking Swipe in this matchup. And you see why. Because uh, their Breaking Swipe here, even though they won the charge attack priority there, did it knock out. And mine will. And I get switch advantage. At this point, I didn't know it was the same team, by the way. But Drifflim comes out, and I get real worried. Because this thing is actually able to farm me down before I get to my next Breaking Swipe. Which is uh, really bad. Because now that Drifflim has an energy lead over mine. And... Uh, my, my, so if they knock out my Drift from here, my Verizon, my Verizon is screwed. It's screwed. So I need to somehow take care of the Drift with mine. I do that by baiting. But unfortunately, my opponent lets a move go, calling the bait. At this point, I'm like, okay, maybe this is not the same team. Because I feel like if it is the Verizon in the back, they would always shield that. Because Drift is such a hard wall to hit. So it might be something else. Maybe a Cobalion. No, that can't be. Because it's also weak to Drift. I don't know. Anyway, I shield their next Shadow Ball. And they get to another they're double the buff though. They are double the buffed. It doesn't knock me out. Now, can I fully farm down this Drift Blim? I barely fully farm down this Drift Blim. I'm at 1 HP, but Drift Blim's health pool is insanely big. This looks like 1 HP, but it's probably 2. Because I survived this one double kick. I get to my second mystical fire versus this Verizon. And now the game is over. Now the game is over. Because they are double the buffed. They are double the buffed. Even though they have an energy lead, they are double the buffed. They've already taken damage. And my Verizon will be able to clean up this game. This is going to take a little bit. So I'm just going to fast forward it. But yeah, GG there. Uh, even though uh, kind of had a bad farm down on their Drift Blim. And then they also called a bait. Drift Blim just pulled through there. Those debuffs, even if you don't get baits, can come in so, so clutch. All right, Dragonite lead. I like this lead a lot. It's very easy for Dragonites to catch a breaking swipe here if you throw them immediately. But I still throw them immediately because I don't mind. If they want to catch a breaking swipe on something that's in the back, that's fine because that something is going to be debuffed. 
or and I can just bring in one of my back two Pokemon into it. So I'm totally fine with this. This opponent decides to stay in though. So that's fine with me. They actually catch a third on Reggie Steel though. Which again is fine. They're now debuffed. I can get more farm on my Verizon now. What I would normally do, by the way, uh, if they uh, catch a breaking swipe on like the second breaking swipe, for example. That's happened multiple times where I'm against Dragonite leads and they'll, they'll catch the second breaking swipe on Reggie Steel or Steelix, or usually Reggie Steel. If it's Reggie Steel at least, what I like to do is farm up to another breaking swipe because those lock ons do no damage and you're giving them some energy, but it really doesn't matter if you're bringing in Verizon in any way. You can take two Focus Blasts here or once they're debuffed and you can still over farm a little bit yourself. They're going to get to the second Focus Blast. Does it knock me out? I can fully farm this down. But they don't allow me. Instead, they bring in a Dragonite, but they weren't at a Dragon Crawl just yet. So I paste them to a Sacred Sword. This knocks them out. What comes in now? Uh, January Dragonite, like Finny, or maybe Jellicent in the back. It is Tapu Finny. I get to the Leaf Blade. This should put them in a range where a Shadow Ball from my Drifflim should be able to knock out. So I bring it in instantly. And we start farming. They should get to a move before I do, but they don't throw it. I get to the Shadow Ball. This knocks out the Finny, and that is another good game. At least it should be. The Red Steel is still alive, but yeah, doesn't have enough health to uh, take me out. GG. Next game is a Swampert lead. This is very bad. Uh, Drift Bam is the pivot, and unfortunately, I get met by Mandibus, uh, so this isn't great. But I have lured out a great answer to Verizon now, so this is not terrible. I can get a bunch of debuffs here with the Balloon on this Mandibus. And that will set up my Heliolisk for a farm down. I haven't shown any charge moves or charge attacks for my Heliolisk uh, to my opponent just yet. Uh, so they don't know I don't have Grass Knot. So what I'm really hoping here is to bring this Metabuzz in a range with my Drift Blim to where I can fully farm down with my Heliolisk. And then throw a charge move on that Swampert uh, to take a shield. Because they don't know I don't have Grass Knot. And a ton of Heliolisk are still running Grass Knot. I go for another Mystical Fire here. Honestly, I was kind of underestimating the damage this would do. Uh, and I was also kind of underestimating how much damage Fold Switch would do. And I realized later why. And it's because this Mandibuzz is actually only 2276 HP. So these Fold Switches are doing more than I wanted it to. And that's going to allow me for less of a farm down. I really should have allowed. I really should have left a lot more health. On this mana bus. I should have undercharged my final mystical fire, but I just didn't realize how much damage those moves would do. Anyway, now this swampert gets to move before me, which is far from ideal. I over farm to grass knot energy or past it even way past it. Go bait with a breaking swipe. They do shield it because they don't know my second move. They still don't know my second move, and I could go more useful later. It doesn't though. As I'm fully hard countered, you know that happens. Sometimes you get fully hard countered, and it is what it is. The other side of the coin helps you out sometimes as well, and you'll hard counter your opponents. GG there. All right, next lead. Reggie Steel. Um, yeah, this is this is not a great lead for Heliolisk. Even with Thunderbolt, this is not a great lead. You're doing, uh, you're doing neutral, but it doesn't do that much. Still, this is a lead I'm fine with, because generally Drift Blim is kind of okay in the back, unless it's a Mandibuzz. So let's just hope it is. What I do is I double shield. Some Reggie Steels, they don't shield both Thunderbolts and you're able to fully farm down. Like this one. You have to double shield though. You have to double shield. Uh, and this is definitely not ideal. But you do come out with a very healthy Heliolisk and almost a breaking swipe loaded. So this is really not the worst. This is really not the worst. Out comes Polyrath now. I'm going to farm up to a Thunderbolt. Throw a breaking swipe here. I'm thinking they're going to shield because so far I've only thrown Thunderbolts. Unfortunately, oh, actually the shield. I remember this differently. I thought they... Uh, I thought they let that go. But this is great. They shield the breaking swipe. I can now bring in Drift Blim, as I do have, do have two good Polyrath answers in the in the back in Drift Blim and Verizon. Even though uh, Ice Punches are hitting for super effective, this is still a very fine matchup for Drift Blim, especially now that Polyrath is debuffed. These counters are really just doing nothing, and those debuffed Ice Punches don't even knock out in three. So I'm fine with that. Gonna go for the Shadow Ball. I, I, I'm thinking this, this might have been a little bit of a mistake, though. The thing I'm worried about here is that they have Reggie Steel, they have Polyrath, that's two Pokemon weak to Verizon. So the third is probably going to be strong, and it does seem to be strong. It is the Cresselia. They already had two Psycho Cuts now, by the way, they need six for Grass Knot. Uh, so they would get there right before my Shadow Ball. So I decide to switch out 
one hex away from a Shadow Ball to hopefully bring in my uh, Drift Blim later to throw a Shadow Ball still. Also, I skipped over that, but I did shield a Mystical Fire, which is great. They're now more than one Psycho Cut away from their next charge move, so I can go for the Shadow Ball here with my Drift Blim. It does a great amount of damage, and now I should be fine because uh, they even allow me to get to another move, but if they would have thrown another move of their own, I would have been able to bring in my Verizon and just start th uh, throwing attacks there, so would have been fine. Uh, GG there. All right, Golisa Pod, Alcom Sand Slash. This is really good for me. Uh, Golisa Pod is one of the best Pokemon to see in the lead, to be honest. It's both Drift Blim and Verizon don't love seeing the pod, but he lists does. You take Resistance from the Shadow Claws, and uh, you can definitely uh, take a, a Liquidation, and Voltages are doing a ton. Other than Sand Slash, great to see for Verizon here. Ice Sponges do add up, but Sacred Sword and Double Kicks add up much more. I'm gonna throw my Sacred Sword here before they can get to another Ice Punch. Just knock out this Alolan Sand Slash. The Golisa Pod can't really far be down at this point, so that's good. Because Leaf Blades uh, would still add up. Gonna get to my first here. Maybe I could have potentially overfought more, threatened the Stone Edge, but I preferred getting off this damage here. And they throw any away, as so I don't want to take a second um, Leaf Blade. The area waste me. It's good information, that means they don't access her most, most of the time. Out comes Obstagon, and this is a problem Pokemon. Obstagon and Scrafty, both problem Pokemon for this Heliolisk Ghost Core. But luckily, Drift himself a ton of play here. Counters are double, triple resisted even. And Night Slashes, when they're once debuffed, as you can see, don't even do that much. And I'm gonna debuff him again soon, right here. So, Drift Limb definitely has player. Mystical Fire will add up. Yeah, I need two more, and this thing is down. They're gonna get to another Night Slash. I might even be able to survive two at this point. Maybe, yeah, two. Unless they get the boost. And that is bad. Because they get to another move. And I can't shield this. Because if I shield this, Helios is, is gonna be shield down. And that's just not gonna be a good time. So I have to let that go. Out comes the Glissa Pod. Luckily, I do get to a move here. I don't go for the Shadow Ball. Maybe I should have. But I actually, I need farm on Helios. So I think this was fine. They were gonna get to a move either way, I think. Uh, well, maybe not, but, it, okay, if I would have knocked out the Golisopod, oh, they also get the defense drop here, yeah, the RNG is not in my favor this, this battle, let's just, wait, let's just think about this, yeah, if I would have knocked out the Golisopod with a Shadow Ball, the Obstagoon would have outpaced my Heliolisk to two moves, so I would have gone down anyway, I needed energy on my Heliolisk to be able to knock out this Obstagoon. But unfortunately, we're able to get to the liquidation, we're able to drop my defense, and now I definitely don't get to Breaking Swipe plus Thunderbolt, and just this one Breaking Swipe won't be enough. So, unfortunately, uh, RNG not in my favor there. That boost on the Obstagon kind of really screwed me over. I don't think the defense drop ma really mattered, though. That that uh, didn't change that much, but that boost definitely was annoying. Anyway, that's the way it goes against Obstagon sometimes. A GG. All right, greed indeed. This is, honestly, probably the worst lead you can face. Uh, it is a neutral lead. But it's just, it's just bad. Uh, it's just bad. Uh, Helios is fine in neutral matchups if the opponent doesn't outpace you. Because they could get to breaking swipes early, but Greedent way outpaces you. So it gets to the body slam before your first breaking swipe. You don't really want to shield that because you're not going to win this matchup anyway. And yeah, it just knocks you out. It just knocks you out. You do get to a breaking swipe plus Thunderbolt. You do bring Greedent quite low. The thing is, Greedent is always going to come with good Verizon answers like Giratina. And Giratina is also not that great for Drift Blim. The real Giratina answer on this team is Heliolisk. It does very good for the Shadow Claw. Giratina especially, still fine versus Dragon Breath Giratina. A little worse versus Dragon Breath Giratina though, but against Gra Dragon Breath Giratina, Drift Blim again does better. So, you know, this team definitely deals with Giratina quite well, but not with Shadow Claw Giratina in the back. That's just tough. I do get to a Shadow Ball there, which does do a good chunk, but not enough to the point where I can farm down. At this point, though, I am hoping that Verizon might be able to do something here. I mean, Giratina is one of the hardest Verizon answers out there. They might not have an equally hard answer in the back, but seeing as they are no shield on Giratina, they are very confident with whatever they have in the back, and they are definitely right to be so, because uh, uh, it's, uh, it's just Charizard. Yeah, that's over. Uh, I can see the match! Next game! Shadow Victory Ball? In Ultra League? <laughs> what? Yeah, that surprised me a lot. So, and and it core breaks my Heliolisk Verizon core. So I bring in Drift Blim, just trying to do something after throwing Breaking Swipe into that thing. But 
How comes Agron, <laughs> which is just so bad, and they they don't throw a move here. Actually, they do throw a move. It's charge attack priority, but they didn't realize that Triflim would win uh, the charge attack priority versus versus Agron, which is amazing for me because I get to the Shadow Ball, I take the shield, they throw a meteor beam, which is just a lot of energy to throw, and now I can fully farm this down with my Verizon. Attack Rose, but it doesn't matter. These moves are resisted, and I do double surf effective, double kicks to far on down. Out comes Deoxys Defense. Really not the worst Pokemon to see for Verizon, by the way. We haven't seen it in the lead yet. I don't think you'll see it in this video, actually. I faced a couple of them, but I don't think I put them in the, in the video. They were on another day. I played this team for two days. Uh, it was uh, like 69 on the first day, which I talked about in the intro. And the second day was like a, a, about, about, about even. It was still good, but it was about, about even. I played all these battles on stream, by the way. So if you want to see those battles, throw on the Twitch a uh, VOD, so you can always check that out. Anyway, uh, this 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 lead is uh, would would not be too bad, is what I'm trying to say. As the Oxys counters really don't do that much, and they have to debuff themselves with Psycho Boost, and, and then the subsequent Psycho Boost won't do as much, as you're gonna see here. I can let the second Psycho Boost go, and now they're debuffed. It really won't do it that much. Yeah, takes it easy. I get to the Leaf Blade here. I know there's still a victory bell on the back. I don't think I can reach a move with Verizon before I can farm down. So switch it to Meliolisk. I just barely reached the breaking swipe here to knock out the Verizon, uh, the, not the Verizon, the victory bell. And that's a GG. Very nice. Very spicy team there by my opponent. Running pretty much a Great League team. Shadow Victory Bell, Bastion, Diogo's Defense. But an Ultra League with Agron instead of the Bastion. That's pretty funny. All right. We talked about Giratina. Here it is. In the lead. Shadow Claw. Giratina versus Heliolisk. This is a very good matchup. Oh, uh, it's... Heliolisk is squishy. Giratina is super bulky. I wouldn't say it's like an incredible matchup for Heliolisk, but it's definitely fine enough to where I can just stay in. Spam breaking swipes. My opponent decides to catch the second one on their Registeel. I'm totally fine with this. I just farm up to another, then switch in my Verizon. Now, one thing I'm worried about is that Registeel is a bait out for Verizon. That is what I'm thinking here. So I kind of want to try to keep my Verizon uh, on the field. So if I can, I want to stall the timer as much as possible and then bring in my Heliolisk versus the Giratina, which will likely come to answer my Verizon. So you're going to see me even undercharge this move and throw it the last time. Oh, I don't undercharge it, actually. That's fine. We take care of the uh, Reggie Steel. Out comes Giratina now. They don't throw a move to try to go for a farm now, but that allows me to farm up a lot of energy on that Verizon. Have two Leaf Blades loaded and dip out into my Heliolisk. This is great. They're gonna throw another Ancient Power, actually, hoping for the boost, but luckily they do not get it. This move won't knock me out, so I'll let it go. I can get to another Breaking Swipe. They stay in. This is great. This is gonna do a good amount of damage on this Giratina. Doesn't knock them out, but that's fine. They get the farm down. They are debuffed now. Double debuffed, so bring in Drifflim. If they would throw a move, we'll just let it go. But they bring in Finny immediately. And my orange was correct. That Registeel was a bait out for Verizon. And I am oh so glad I saved those two Leaf Blades, as I should be able to fire off both of them right now. As long as I don't get knocked out by the Water Gun, but I shouldn't. Yeah. Oh, they actually throw a move, which is interesting. But that's fine. I have a shield. We already pressed the move. So, should be able to get to it. Fire off the Leaf Blade. This knocks out the Tapu Fini. And I don't think I should have any problem knocking out the Giratina now. So my Drift Blim already uh, has still has a lot of health. Tiny bit of energy, but not that much. We are firing off Hexes now. They throw the Ancient Power. I let the first one go, just in case they get the boost and then get to a second one. I don't want to have to take a boost of the Ancient Power, but yeah. They don't even boost. I fire them down. GG there. That was the final battle. As you could see, this team definitely has a lot of potential. I don't know if I'd recommend it to everyone, though. It is not the easiest squad to run. And besides that, I'm playing at very high rating, which means there's a ton of good players, but their teams are also generally more predictable. And if you're lower down in the rating, teams might be a bit more random. There may also be more Swampert leads or like Ninjas in the back to catch your Drift Limb a pivot, which is bad news for this squad. So overall, be cautious when running this if you do want to run it. It. I do think it's a very fun team though, so as long as you have like not too high of expectations, it should be very fun uh, to run regardless. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck with your battles trainers.